Excellent. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the City Council Select Committee to Study Barriers to Serving on City Boards and Commission. Uh, we're meeting today at 7.30. Uh, it's January 10, 2023. This meeting is starting at 7.30. And depending of the amount of public comment and also the agenda items, it may run all the way to 9 p.m. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order by roll call. Uh, Laura? Javier. Here. Um, Councillor Gore. Here. Or Jamila, she's not yeah. present yet. Um, Councillor Perry. Here. Gwen Nabod. Here. Um, Cynthia Swapas. Here. And Susan McDonald Bolanos. Mm -hmm. Not present. Excellent. So and just just a reminder for people, um, we used to be seven, now we're six. That's the reason why with four, we have quorum to be able to move forward. And um, I, I trust that Susan and, and Jamila will will come in. And if not, probably I, I get an email or a message. Excellent. Um, we're gonna start with public comments. Uh, we make we are really intentional in, in always in every single meeting, independently if we're getting or not people to keep the first part of our meeting open for public comment. We believe it's important. We believe it's, it's sensitive for any city commission, any select board uh, that is uh, at, in, in an, that's placed in an advisory role to be able to have a public comment. So we always allocate 15 minutes. Um, I don't see anybody and I, I see uh, Councilor Gore coming in. Um, Jamila? I'm sorry, I'm late. Jamila. Hey. So um, I'm, we're gonna wait for two more minutes just in case somebody comes in. Uh, many times we're starting the meeting sort of 7.35, so God knows maybe somebody's coming late saying, you know, those guys always start late. Uh, so I'm going to wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, um, so I'm going to close the comment and the next agenda item is approval of minutes. Um, we have, we have, so for, for one of the very first times, we only have to approve one set of minutes from last meeting. Um, we have a couple of options. We have, if, if everybody was able to take a look to it, we're going to approve it. Um, we can go over right now, I can share my screen and we can go over, or we can just table it and we can approve last meeting's minute and this meeting next time. Um, I circulated them very late, so I apologize. Um, I'd be surprised if anyone did get a chance to review them. Um, I, I, opened, I, I, I opened the floor. Um, in the interest of time, I don't think we should go through them line by line, but just move them to the next meeting, perhaps. Okay, um, I would second that. Perfect. I see people uh, when not, is nodding. Yes. Uh, yes. Jamila, are you okay with it? Excellent. So uh, we're gonna table the minutes from December twenty seventh, which was our last meeting. And before moving away from you know the public portion of it and the the agenda. I just want to remind people that we're meeting uh, every month, the second and the fourth Tuesday of every month from 7.30 to 9.30. So if you're interested in, pro if you're watching this uh, later on, on, a, on a, as a as a recording of the meeting, uh, feel free to be invited. Uh, this select committee is running all the way to April 15th. So, and we're always having the first 15 minutes for public comment. So everybody's invited. Uh, and we're fairly regular with, with our timing. Now we're gonna move to next, which is the general discussion. And I'm gonna, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna recognize Megan, the wonderful Megan Pike that's here. 
And I want to deliver sort of good news, having in mind that Jamila was not here when I mentioned it. Uh, thanks to Laura's work, uh, a little more than 400 people got an email, a thoughtful email, explaining the sort of what we were looking for, who we were, and also with the link to the survey. A little more than 400 people got it. So far, we have had, in what amount of time, Laura, like a week and a half, maybe less? You're muted. Not even like a, a, a week. Yeah. Yeah. Last week I sent it out. So we were able to get 25% of those 400 emails back. So now we have 103 answers to the survey, which is massive. It's 25%. And as I said before, this is, this is with no follow up. This is not with one-to-one -one conversations. This is not with us stalking people to, for them to fill it out, which it will happen. But um, so far, 103 answers with no nagging anybody. That's, that's it's remarkable. That's showing how important the work is. And I was, we were talking with Laura because we, Laura would CC me in the emails and I would get the answer from members to her, like almost excited, right, Laura? <laughs> they were like excited to fill it out so that was so. right that was surprising to me <laughs> right so and i think this is this is a testament to the work that everyone in this uh select committee has done uh including jenna who is not a member anymore who was able to to put all the work that we did with the questions and the format into a platform that has been incredibly accessible and i think that's a key plays a huge role in the fact that people can just fill it up, right? That's 103 people means that it's super accessible. Um, so I just want to say thank you, Jenna and every single member because 103, it's huge and that's going to make our work easier and super interesting. Um, and at some point, it's not in today's agenda, but probably I'm going to prep before our next meeting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do sort of a small half of the road report for the members, what, what we're finding in those service. I'm gonna print out and run some numbers uh, with the system, and I'm gonna report that back to the members. And I'm gonna send that ahead of time so everybody can see it. Uh, so we have sort of a halfway uh, understanding of where we're heading with this. Excellent. I have uh, a question. Yes. When? A couple of people have come to me and said, I serve on two different things. Should I respond once for both or should I respond once for each one? So in the case of that people serve in more than one commission, I would say if they already fill it out and send it, have any man just one, they they can go ahead and do it for the second one. Okay. And and the reasoning behind that, it's and I, and I think we talk a little bit about this. The nature of the boards and commissions is quite different. And then in right. the, in, the, in the workload, it's quite different, right? The dynamics is quite different. That's what uh, I thought. So, so yes, if 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 they I would appreciate if they can allocate, you know, the, the time to be able to do it. This is around eight minutes, if I remember correctly, uh, how long does it take? Right. And I mentioned um, there is a, an area that, you know, you can narrate and, and write, you know, that and explain that if need be. Okay. Absolutely. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Wen. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna to move to um, discussion with Human Rights Commission Chair Megan Pye. So um, as, as we talked before, everybody in, the, in, our, in our select committee thought that the, the conversation with Megan was really, really good, interesting. And we wanted to sort of to keep in touch with her and be able to invite her back again to keep talking about this, right? Uh, talking about, uh, Commission that has a pretty unique <laughs> charge and a pretty unique workload and a pretty unique set of members, right? Um, so I, I wanna I wanna talk a little bit about um, 
Something that I'm seeing because I'm serving also in the advisory board to the mayor in relationship to compensation for elected officials. And we had a meeting yesterday, and I think Megan, you're gonna find this interesting. Um, because at the beginning, the conversation, you know, this is open meeting, so everybody can come for meetings too. So yesterday, um, we start talking compensation in relationship to representation, like the fact that there's a ton of people that not may not run for office because they have a job, they cannot leave that job, they don't have disposable income, they don't have disposable amount of time. Um, and many times you may not be able to get a single mother into the council or, or that kind of dynamic because you know there is not resources for childcare and other things. And when we were talking about that in our chair, it's uh, John Bidwell, extremely thoughtful and great guy. I start thinking about Megan in this select committee because there is a lot of parallels with the ability of serving that, that we, were, we were talking yesterday about elected officials and we specifically were talking about the mayor, city council and school committee. And in this committee, we have been talking about uh, people ability to be able to serve, people being able to attend regularly and not falling through the cracks or one day just not, not coming, people being engaged, right? People being able to have, you know, the help of uh, being able to pay for childcare. Uh, and also the ability of, 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 of creating sort of an environment when pe that people can come to the meetings. Uh, specifically also the fact that if you remember uh, Cynthia, we, the first couple of months within the Hunter Police Review Commission, we didn't have a lot of people. We have the usual suspects, but we didn't have a lot of people. In the last three months, we got a ton of people coming. And one of the things that would happen is that something that we talk in the first, second, and third month of the of the of the of the of the commission, somebody would come in month number eight and tell us that we were not thinking about this. And I would think. <laughs> Oh, I can see that you didn't you didn't you didn't show up for when we talk about that like two months ago, right? And <laughs> and at that point, I was you know, uh, Cynthia was a co-chair, so I would I would be able to think about that and you know, sort of like that. you didn't show up. So, but I I do think that the ability of people to be able to serve as an elected official and as a volunteer in commissions also comes to for people to have time to be able to communicate with, with community members. So you see that uh, uh, city council members and school committee, they have a newsletter, right? The fact that not all the commissions have, uh, have the, an awesome admin like we do, right? So, and, and taking a, taking a, sending out an, an, an uh, email blast uh, with an update of the work that you're doing, it's taxating when you're the chair or vice chair when these things, right? It's it's difficult. Even even for for uh, for city council members. I mean, I see. Uh, I live in Ward Three, so I always get Jim's uh, newsletter, which is beautiful. And I'm friends with Alex Jarrett, so I see when he's posting on Facebook his newsletter, which is extremely thorough. And I think that's important. And and. I would like to talk about that. I would like to talk the ways that we, and, and this is for my entertaining because I'm starting to write the report, the first draft that I'm gonna send to you guys probably uh, part of that for the next meeting. And I think this section is really important. Independently, if we find a way to get a stipends, independently of that, that's, that's not necessarily our responsibility to so find a way to do it, but as we see the need of it, it, has, it should be stated and should be said in the, in the report, right? So I would like sort of to, to open, open the floor. Uh, Megan, I'm, I'm gonna just treat you as a member, <laughs> as somebody here that is sort of, uh, as a sort of member, uh, invited member. So, I want to open the floor for that. 
um, because I'm pretty sure I'm things that I'm missing. And, and I would like to sort of for, for the membership of the select committee to, to talk about this because I do think it's important and, uh, and I value your opinion. Thank you, Javier. Um, well, I, I do have, I, I feel like um, I do have something, I you've uh, brought up something that I want to mention after um, um, my introduction, but um, I hope you all bear with me um, and stay on for a couple more minutes after I talk about <laughs> my, uh, what I intended to come here for, which is a follow-up on a meeting, uh, a visit to you in November. So um, it's uh, it's great that I think I've met all of you and it's good to see you, you Laura. It's been a little while. Um, and I have to say, I did receive uh, two surveys from you because I, I have the privilege of serving on multiple um, commissions and I, I have the privilege of doing so. Um, so, you know, as you are all aware, the HRC, um, Human Rights Commission, uh, shares your interest in um, increasing transparency and access to public service, particularly for volunteers on Northampton boards and commissions. Um, and, uh, you know, we share that belief that onboarding of our new members has been um, uneven or we're lacking across the 23 standing boards and commissions, committees, and there are myriad ways that we can uh, improve that process. But I want to recognize uh, Councillor Perry um, for how he has um, approached um, candidates when he's on the, uh, for the time, at the time he's on the City Services Committee. Um, in the past few months, he has welcomed two of our newest members, Diana and Alton, and um, he spent a substantial amount of time with them, not just uh, vetting their qualifications, but also sharing what he does and answering their questions about municipal government. So um, he's demonstrating that counselors can take a strong role in orienting volunteers, um, especially those that have no prior connections to City Hall or, or may have never served on boards before. So um, I first came to um, introduce a project of ours, which is um, was the first draft of a handbook for new commissioners um, to help them really know what the history and uh, purview and expectations and priorities are for the commission they, they have just joined. Um, and I really appreciate all the helpful and thoughtful feedback that you've offered me. Um, and I hope that if our handbook can be included in your report and is approved by the city, that it can be a template to be adapted and by, by other boards and commissions. Um, so some of my takeaways from that meeting um, was that um, several of you agreed that um, in addition to our handbook, providing some cut and dry information that's critical in the onboarding process, it could also serve as a recruitment tool for prospective volunteers. Um, uh, Cynthia, you uh, suggested that we highlight the missions of the board, the mission of the board. Um, and I have, I can share, um, I can share the handbook right now if, if it's helpful. Would people like that? Okay. Yes. <laughs> I, am, I don't have access. Oh, um, can someone? Somebody had meant to do. What? Okay. Um, all right, let me share my screen right now. Okay. So the handbook here. Um, mentioned that the first two pages are pretty boilerplate. So, well, the second half of the 
second page, we, I have added a section from the charter. Um, and I think this inform there's a, this is in the administrative code for all the individual boards commissions. Is that right, Laura? Yes. Okay. So, and here is really what our purview is. Um, we don't have, we don't investigate or adjudicate um, claims, you know, human rights violations, but we organize programs, events to educate about human rights. Um, and Jana, I believe, thought that uh, we should, somewhere in the handbook, perhaps we could um, uh, we could um, have some language about our priorities um, to help people um, figure out if there's a match in their skills or expertise with what the commission is doing. Um, and also, perhaps connect um, So this third page, I'm sorry, this third page, I'll, I'll skip through. That is our, those are our bios, meeting schedule form. So she thought that we could um, make our current activities a bit more explicit in the handbook, um, which would help people understand like what not only like what topics we are interested in, but how we're addressing them as a commission. So I've hyperlinked what I can to our recent activities, which is those of my memory of the last four years. Um, and so this page I think would be obviously different for every single board and commission as well. Um, so she also mentioned that there might be, um, we may want to indicate if there are relevant trainings or resources that would be helpful with the work of the, of the board. Um, something for the of a primer for new members. Um, and that would probably not work for the Human Rights Commission, but would be important for a board with more uh, technical, um, a more technical board that um, also has more decision-making power that issues permits and so forth. Um, so uh, yeah, this, the HRC um, is, you know, the membership is pretty generalist. Um, we, unlike the, unlike the most of the others, um, so we don't really require or a particular set of skills or qualifications. So, okay, so that's it. I wanted to know if anyone else had additional suggestions or see anything that's an obvious omission, but in general, it's just, um, it's four pages. Um, this is fairly, I think this is pretty common to the first page and a half to, to all of the boards and commissions. And Laura, you probably have a good sense of that. Um, we, um, I, yeah, think, I agree. I think that'd be very helpful, the general information in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Megan, I have a question. Yes. So one of the things that we taught at the beginning of our meetings was, so when we started, it's about, you know, how many clicks does it take for you to go from the main page of the city to get anything, right? Mm -hmm. so I remember the, the re one, the policing report, I wasn't, I was never able to get <laughs> where I needed to go. Um, I, so one of the things that when, when I see this, I think, huh, 
maybe you know there should be a specific page in 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 the section of of you know of, of boards and commissions mm -hmm. where anybody can get go and get it right mm -hmm. besides you know specific people interest and in, people interested can just go and get it right mm -hmm. and maybe mm -hmm. that page has to be linked with the openings so somebody can just go to a page say oh this commission has two, two openings okay and and can, it can say that you know if you want more information you can see the handbook of the commission mm -hmm. so i see it as a as a much as a as a huge piece of information but also a motivator for people that you know are seeing if they want to serve or not to be able to you know if they want to send an application for an opening uh, you know right and they, i have a question oh you sure go ahead um yeah so um i think what you guys are saying is like if we could like have some place up uh on the website that when somebody is like oh human human rights commission and so they 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 look at it and maybe there would be a copy of this available for them to download in a PDF so that they know what they're getting into before um, applying. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think there's a lot of value in centralizing this information. And, you know, in the process of creating this four page handbook, um, I've had to look at a number of different sources um, outside of our city website. Um, some of this is and the HRC, curiously, is one of the few commissions that does have its own web page, although the information is not regularly updated because we, we don't control that. Um, it is, um, there is information that is out of date, but I think that has to do with the, the fact that the, you know, the, it's, it's, an, it's unclear or who has like jurisdiction over that. Who, who is responsible for that in the city. Um, but it, yes, I would love to have maybe just like even this very like boilerplate first um, page and half about you know, our procedures and expectations um, with this, with a couple of links um, available kind of on the, the page about wars and uh, wars and commissions, and then each individual commission can have their kind of customized handbook mm -hmm. available. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So the other thing was so yes. Um, does anyone have any other suggestions and questions before I? Apart from it being bilingual, um, also on a in in Spanish as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, make it multilingual. Yeah, and I think Cynthia also has her hand up. Yes, Cynthia. Yeah, um, just to make sure I I have this right. So Megan, what you're providing us is a template, um, yes. for lack of a better word, that every board or commission could follow. Yes. Um, and we would post this, you know, somewhere in the um, morass of the website, or at least have it available. And um, there were some things that I was thinking about that I think you covered, but I, um, it kind of went by quickly, but are sort of general to all boards and commissions, things like um, public comment, um, the role of of council um, in turn in uh, council mm -hmm. to the to the mayor, particularly with open meeting law regulations, and mm -hmm. I think you mentioned that you mentioned uh, Robert's rules and how things or that process or procedure. So I'm just I think there are some things that are typical to the way we all have to run in a, in, mm -hmm. in a city meeting quorum, seventy two hours in advance, etc. Um, just to mm -hmm. give that fuller picture. So I don't know if that's a, another task. And the other thing I was thinking of is that um, the select committee or the board, the city council committee on services, I think it is, 
um, might be the place where this sits. I don't know, um, to be responsible for updating, et cetera. I know that's adding mm -hmm. another layer. I, I worry about the work that's in the mayor's office that things get behind, things don't, you know, this will have to be updated based on each member. The, the bio of each member is fantastic. I really love that personal touch piece. Um, so just some just some general thoughts that I had about doing this. I think it's a fantastic thing sure. to do. Um, so thank you. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> and our bios are already outdated because we have, <laughs> um, we have lost at least one other member and have another one coming on. Um, right. Yeah. Um, even, even terms and rotation and when the term is up and I, I, I know that's a, it's pretty huge, mm -hmm. but maybe if each board or commission can keep that up to date and give it to one central location so that it can be updated on a regular basis. Just a couple I of think It would be very helpful actually to have something. I thought about this chart of our, to, to see how um, the legislative and executive branches relate and all the agencies relate to each other. Um, and so, but that, but that that is a big task, and I was thinking about adding having that section here too. But that is will be a job for another another commission or group. Um, Garrick. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to first thank you, Megan, for your work on putting this together. Um, you know, you know, while it is something you put together for the Human Rights Commission, it really is just above and beyond. It's so valuable. It's uh, I think everyone here has gone through the kind of awkward transition into service, um, you know, and, and one of the things I've loved about being on the, the city services committee is having a chance to just talk with people who want to do good for the city. Um, it's, it's just been a blessing. Um, and a lot of what we talk about is just kind of what happens when you jump in the deep end. Um, and I was actually talking to Alton McRae about this, you know, I was like, oh man, I, I, I kind of tipped your hand that you were working on this onboarding thing. And he was very excited about that. Um, and I, I think that this is something that is going to benefit the city as Javier noted, as you said as well, um, it's, it's not just a way for people who are already serving, but it's a way to recruit mm -hmm. people in general. And I think that is gonna be very powerful. Um, you know, my, my hope, is that we can figure out a way to put it smack in the middle of the website. You know, we've, we've already mentioned that it's hard to navigate. Uh, I've spent more time on the city website than I care to admit mm -hmm. trying to find things. Um, but I wanted to go back to what Cynthia is saying uh, or, or mentioned is that I, I agree that possibly this document is something that should live on the city services site. Um, and I wanted to maybe bring up the idea of, of having Karen Foster, who's the chair. Uh, we're lucky to have the vice chair, Jamila, is here. Um, but maybe we should, you know, before our committee is done, we can bring in Karen and, and just discuss that and see if that makes sense to, to leave, you know, updating and, and making sure we recirculate that information to city services. Because I really think that it is in the purview of that committee specifically. Right, and so I'm thank sure you, thank that, you. thank you. I, I think the city attorney would need to do the pretty thorough review too. And I would you know, I would appreciate a, a nice proof of this document um, and someone to test out all the uh, the links that, um, you know, speaking of testing, Alton McCray, he is our real life, real time tester of these new onboarding processes as we are, um, as he's come on and we're started to attend our meetings in the fall. And I think he's just, um, he was just approved at the last uh, council meeting, right? So um, excited about that. So I wanna go back to um, something that, something that Javier has like stirred up and I do, um, do important, do think it's important to share with you that, um, I think this project um, will also, this, this handbook and possibly putting together this handbook um, is also um, addressing probably less public, some of the more hidden challenges of service on the volunteer boards. 
Um, I think some a couple of you who served on the Policing Review Commission, this is going to resonate with you. Um, so my my perspective as someone on the HRC for nearly four years is that we actually deal with less with people who are attempting to join and more with a lot of the misunderstandings um, about what is possible or realistic um, within the limited authority and resources given to us. Um, and I think maybe the counselors will agree here too. Um, so recently, uh, someone whom I never met um, emailed me um, to ask what the HRC has been doing, um, why we have not organized citywide events for International Human Rights Day and Martin Luther King Day. Um, and this person says that they're intending to, to write about our lack of activity in a, in a gazette column. Um, so um, putting aside the, the issues of whether or not it is our responsibility alone um, and if other entities are offering such community events, um, I have to say we have, um, we are unique in that we don't have any sort of city staff liaison, like a Carolyn Nish or a Sarah LaValle that attends our meetings and can liaise with the mayor's office um, or, the, or the agency that's, that's linked with the board. Um, there's uh, no, you know, there's no director of human rights. Um, we're advisory to the mayor, but we are rarely asked to weigh in on executive actions because, and you know, so we're, um, but in, in common to all boards and commissions, you know, is that we, we work without a budget. Um, although we do incur uh, costs of time and monetary costs and time for uh, performing our activities. Um, two, two commissioners that organized this virtual event in February 2022 have since resigned um, it was a lot of work. Um, so we do this without support or authority or real bandwidth. Um, our board is or is a five seventh BIPOC. Uh, we're all employed except for one. Uh, and we're all caregivers. And four Four of us have four of them have been on the HRC for less than six months, so it's a fairly new new group of people. Um, and Elton is, of course, as you know, not even official um, until our next meeting in Jan this month. Um, right. Javier, did you? Yeah, uh, first, sorry that. Your, I mean, sorry for that interaction or whatever comes down in whatever this person writes about. I mean, this is complicated, right? Because, and I, I didn't know, but yeah, that this is a good example when, when I mentioned uh, people coming to meetings and, you know, in X, Y, or coming into a process or a dynamic of a, one of the commissions, assuming, right? I mean, until last time that uh, Martin Luther King was celebrating in Northampton in Edwards Church, the the fun resistance center was the one organizing it. I mean there was there was there was a couple of organizations doing Martin Luther King Day every time in Northampton, right? Yeah. And and you know uh Edward Church, which is uh Reverend McSherry's church would be the one hosting it, would be beautiful, right? So the fact that somebody's coming and saying, well, you have not or this and that, I think that it's, it speaks to the lack of, uh, the lack of understanding of the roles of what commissions and advisory committees do, but also speak to, to maybe we need to, be, to give the city a gentle push to be able to to post this like this this kind of document that you make and created, which is access, accessible for people to read and say, ah, okay, 
this is what they do. If I, do, if I feel that they should be doing more, I can go and say, you know what? I feel you have been doing this because it's not stated in your chart or it's not part of what you're talking about. Or maybe you didn't think about it, right? Rather than having <laughs> uh, sort of a, 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 a misunderstanding of what should be done or not, right? And also, and, and also I, have, I want to say that in Martin Luther King Day, the truth school does a study. Right. right? Yeah. So um, I, I'm sorry that that oh. that kind of interaction happened. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, thank you for acknowledging that. I wanted to just um, say, yes, it is. A, so my very long point is that this is a um, this is an issue for I think it's particularly for retention on the boards and commissions. This um, this distance um, between what the community expects and what we're able to deliver. So um, I sorry I'm sorry I interrupted you, Gwen. Oh no, that's okay. Um, if you if you want to keep going on that, you can. But um, I was going to ask a question. Um, you know, sometimes there are things going on downtown or um, like a certain group of people want to, you know, um, I, you know, we did the um, solidarity with the woman of Iran a few months ago. So like, could we have called the Human Rights Commission and, and said, you know, we want to let you guys know about this or um, mm -hmm. stuff like that um, when it talks about. Yeah. bringing awareness like i think using examples um mm -hmm. and then visibility right i have actually in the last few months um created a facebook page i wish i would you know we could promote events like that um sure. always email us um if okay. you have suggestions for speakers if you would like to come yourself um but um yes cynthia um, yes, um, Megan, I'm just to echo Javier, and I'm sorry if I'm getting on a soapbox, but um, I'm sure you know that on August 20th, 2020, the City Council signed a resolution called R-20-107 that says the City will appoint a Director of Human Rights, along with many other suggestions. This all came after Floyd shootings. And yeah. so I guess uh, signed by the esteemed Laura Kretzler <laughs> as clerk at the time. But I guess I guess my point is to acknowledge your work and, and to I'm sure you you know this. And as we wait now going on our third year for that director of human rights, um, it concerns me as a member of this committee that if city council resolutions signed by the city council are not, <laughs> you know, being enacted for whatever reasons. I'm con I'm concerned about the viability of our report and our recommendation. So I know I'm making a point that's a little off um, track here, but when you brought that up about the individual criticizing the Human Rights Commission, it was, it's just, you know, we we have a resolution right now that says we're going to do a lot of things. And I'm not sure this is just the main one that I ticked off of that list that we haven't done, we haven't addressed. And I don't know if anyone in the services committee or city council or in the mayor's office is taking this on. So I just wanted to make that point as it gets into the minutes, I hope. So thank you. Thank you for your work. And, and this will, you know, what you're doing here, I don't, I personally don't want you to take it on. I think this is something I hope Javier we can include in our report as a recommendation and an example and mm -hmm. something that came from a grassroots um, commission, i.e. the Human Rights Commission, um, yes. because we're serious about this. Um, so, so thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Yeah. We are fully sponsoring and espousing this in our report. That's... <laughs> After all, we are a safe haven community. Right. And um, as as you know, I and, and also it's, it's complicated, this right? Because sometimes charges are really specific, 
and restrictive depending on the char of the charge. And as you know, I tend to see charge loosey goosey because I think it's <laughs> the, 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 the lack of a specificity in, a, in the charge of a committee, I think works in favor of the committee who didn't write the charge. Yeah. And, and, and I would say that the charge as an advisory body of the Human Rights Commission is really clear. And, and, and you know, as, as, as when said, yes, I mean, groups doing a stuff around town, they have the same option to go and speak to the Human Rights Commission, present it and say, do you want to co-sponsor this? Mm -hmm. I, I have seen, okay. I, right. and, and I, ha I have seen groups not wanting a city body being part of what they do, right? Um, and and I also I find it odd uh, that that an interaction like that would happen. I mean, you know, uh, you, Megan, myself, people of color, and that's sort of off-putting um, because you know the, the same the, the same requirements. Why you have not done, you know, uh, uh, Martin Luther King and all. I can say that any any other attitude that sympathetic, empathic, and, and asking respectfully, that's not much the spirit of those events. <laughs> so I, I, I have to say that because I, you know, um, it's complicated. Jamila. Um, I just, uh, wanted to say that I, I'm really, thankful for your work, Megan, that you've done on this. Um, I think it's it's really important. And I, I think also what Councilor Perry said about having this on the city service website would be a good thing to do, um, especially the, the kind of the boilerplate part about what commissions and boards and councils do. Um, I, I, I too, I'm sorry about, you know, the letter at, I think you guys on the HRC work really hard. I know you made a statement at a, a rally that I went to about disability rights. Um, yeah. And I, it, you're a volunteer organization. It, it's like a lot of new people are on there. And, and I hope that, I mean, I'm hoping that people will stay on. I, I, I'm, I just, yeah, I, I just see all the, all these issues that come up that, that are kind of what we have to muddle through when we write our report and kind of have to get out there. And, you know, like Cynthia said, you know, if we have uh, a human rights director in a resolution, we should definitely be following up on that. Definitely. And and trying to figure out how to get that through. So that's thank just you my for, thought. Thank you for, for indulging my little anecdote. I hope I didn't overstep. Um, but I just uh, I do want it, I I do bring it up because I I think it does cover maybe five or six different types of barriers that you have listed in your survey. Um, mm -hmm. so and um, it's something that I'm sure the our elected council people are aware of and experience as well. So um, this and this dissonance between what you know what it is that we should be doing, what is it we can do, is also I think probably familiar to you, um, Councilor Gore and Perry. Um, but uh, I would yes. Yeah, so let's I let's start here and. Um, I really appreciate, you know, this generous input from you. I will, um, I would like to send this to you. If you're going to distribute this, I may request that you omit the, the commissioner's bios for now and, um, and uh, perhaps just leave the headings here um, because a lot of this, some of this is still in flux and um, would it be would it be okay with you, Megan, if you send it to me? I mm -hmm. create a version template of it. Mm -hmm. Right, the section of bio, which is just members bio, that's it. 
we keep what it's you know i identify section we do it as i create a template i share it with you to see if it's okay and that's what we're going to be using mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would be i appreciate that perfect thank you so much do you have any other questions um please um you know email me at that hrc address if you do if anything comes up but then okay i will be transferring this to you javier shortly thank you all again thank you so much Megan. thank you laura can you make me co-host You're a co-host. So, um, so let's see. This was really, really good because I do think that this kind of, you know, we're gonna we're gonna fall in 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 the side of expecting the best of people. So that's this. I think this kind of situation comes out of you know the community not understanding what commissions and boards are doing in specific, right? It's just a confusion. And and this is something that I think falls in my <laughs> in my loose reading of a charge falls into it. Um, joking aside, um, let me see where we are right now with the agenda. Excellent, finishing workshop in Google Docs and forward. So good. Um, we're, I'm gonna take a uh, letter D of agenda item number four, which is discussion about outreach right now. And Cynthia, I'm gonna share the documents that you share with us so you can sort of talk a little bit about the thought process behind it. Is that okay? Excellent. Sure. Let's, see. Let's okay. start with this. So I I think that you know, we came up with, uh, Garrick and I came up with uh, January 21st and February 7th as a couple of potential listening date sessions, um, knowing that, that those dates are right around the corner. I just, you know, this is just a sort of a brainstorm data dump diary of the mind of trying to um, look at who we can contact, when, how, what, and already you know, just based on this, we can slip all these dates around. There's nothing in the concrete here, but we have to, if we want to get some uh, some activity on the listening sessions, we want to get some people there. Um, we have to start thinking about uh, publicity for that. So that's all this is. Um, and I welcome anyone's um, addition to who to send press releases and social media blurbs too. I just made a list of, let's say, 21 organizations. I'm sure there's many more out there. Um, and um, so that's what this is, um, just to have a plan. I think what's um, concerning me a bit is that, uh, you know, I'm not sure who's writing the press release and the dissemination piece and whatever. Um, but I did add, I'm not sure if this got to folks or not, but there was a listening session kind of template that was sent out about another city activity. And I thought it was a good model to follow. Did that get sent out, Laura? Did, did, um, did I perhaps send that? You mean the communication plan? No, no that, this is the communication plan, but there was, right. um, Javier, I might've sent it to you. Um, there was another listening session template thing that came out um, by a city council activity. So maybe I didn't send it out, but I can do I can I remember it. seeing it. Okay, it's it's probably my bad, Laura. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, just to start. Hold on, hold on. I have something here. It may be this one. Yeah, that's it. Um, so this is a flyer <laughs> that. Uh, what oh, was it, <laughs> it looks familiar. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, it looks like somebody edited it here. Did you do that out here? Uh, I okay, have, I, I, in all disclosure, I have all my documents in night mode. That's the reason why it's the, with the black background. I love it that I'm gonna. That is great. So much easier to read. But um, this could be our template, right? 
And yep. um, if, if we needed a hard copy or actually, you know, we could send this out through social media as, as well. Um, oh, I see what I did here. So this was about the budget. Um, and so we would just, you know, put in our own text and okay. um, send it out. Why not, right? Unless we want to spend a lot of our time saying, this is the graphic I want. <laughs> you know, so, right, uh, right, right. Up to you all. No, this I don't is know who did this, Garrick or Jamila. I don't know if you know who did it, but I thought it was a good, good thing to start off with. I love it. Yeah, I actually did that um, uh, for the listening session the city, the finance committee had on the budget recently. Laura, you I, did? I'd it's like to swap out that graphic because I've used that a lot. It <laughs> was <laughs> used in 2018 for a marijuana forum that resources <laughs> had. So. Maybe Javier will give you permission to swap out the graphic. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? This is a good excuse for me to get into Canvas. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have I have colleagues of this from the ACLU that they are in love with Canvas. So everybody so, says that. I oh yeah, Canvas, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna try. So I'm gonna go back and share the previous document. Yeah. Because I think it's 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 that document came out of the conversation between Cynthia and Garrick, and I think it's really thoughtful. Uh what it has. So one of the first things, you know, that, that I thought was about was in the press release to media outlets, uh, you know, the new, the, the new, how you call it, not acquisition, but this, the, 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 the new player that was signed by NPR, local NEPN, New England Public Media. So Monty Belmonte is having a new show yeah. in public radio. I think mm -hmm. it would be beautiful to have Consular Perry and Consular Gore going to talk there. Yeah, it would be incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, he he was on our original list of people to contact when Cynthia and I first talked, and then so, he he glowed up. He, he, he elevated <laughs> he, his position. Then he quit and then got a new. He job. announced yeah. <laughs> retirement that didn't did not last. <laughs> and look, so that's that's really good and. Let me check with Monty. I, I can draft uh, a press release um, and send it around. Um, that's that's not not a problem. Um, I would need I would I would need help with the flyer though. With the flyer, I'm I'm not a, sort of the kind of person that would would be able to do something neat and and you know colorful and I pleasing so that's something that I would need some volunteers to do but I, I can write the 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 press release um would it be okay um Cynthia if you think about I mean I, I, we need to move all those dates right yeah and and I think that um yeah, we need to move those dates. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna send. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this this, and I'm gonna send sort of a suggested dates because I think it's gonna. We may have to start with the draft press release, email, and posters, like January. Our next meeting is the twenty fourth. With I, as a parenthesis, I want to say that Laura thoughtfully is saving time for that meeting to have uh Councilor Foster to talk literally about what Councilor Perry mentioned. Um yeah Laura sort of thought about it and we have allocated that time for that. So I think that I can bring every to everybody the press the draft of the press release to for us to workshop it at the 24th. So we can start rather than January 10, January 24 with everything. If that's okay, if not, please tell me if you feel that that's a way to forward on the month. That's that's just tell me. But I do think that maybe telling it twenty four, which is our meeting to get it done with the draft that I'm gonna bring, and in that meeting, set up all the all the coming dates. Is is that something that works for everybody? 
Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the, the two listening sessions were draft dates, right? So they can be pushed out. Um, so um, I, I feel good about that, um, but I, I hope everyone else does too. I mean, we don't have a choice at this point, so. Excellent. And uh, what I would say is that when we have the press release, um, we can sort of try to get a version of the press release that can be added to the newsletters or the city council newsletters, or if if we can request uh, Garrick and Jamila, if if you feel comfortable requesting city, because I know that Jim just sent sort of a chore informative newsletter. I think Alex did it a couple of weeks ago. So if we can have uh, an special edition message from the counselors to their mailing list about this that would be great i don't know if that's something that they they would be willing to do but if 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 you two feel comfortable asking counselors about it during uh the one of the meetings that would be great so they can disseminate it uh in the neighborhoods list serve and their own uh email list yeah i think um i think uh Karen, Jim, Stan Moulton, um, Alex, they all have newsletters. Yes, yeah. Excellent, so I'm gonna repeat this just in case uh, for me, just for me. So uh, by January 24, we're gonna review the final draft for the first release. The first January 10 date here is gonna be shift for January 24. And in that meeting, we're gonna timeline everything is that okay with everybody yep yeah, yeah. excellent excellent and, and also in that uh cynthia I, i'm so sorry javier go, go ahead but, uh, and if you have other organizations entities um favorite bars restaurants um hangout places to add to the list please just brainstorm That'd be great. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna talk to Wen Agna so she can sort of talk to the people on the school committee. Gary. So uh, just looking at the list, and again, thank you, Cynthia, for, for sending this out and uh, kind of giving us a framework to work out of, but looking at it, uh, I think that some of these would require a little more than just a um, kind of a press release. And, and I say that to, to look at like Bill Newman, um, you know, previously me and Cynthia talked about having someone show up on one of his shows. Uh, I don't know if Council Gore wants to go or if, if someone else wants to go, uh, we could we can maybe set something up with Bill because a lot of people listen to his show. And I think, you know, more than a blurb, we could get some real personality out of it um, and tease out what we've been working on. Um, you know, again, th this meeting here for me shows that we've been doing some great work, like all the stuff that Megan has been doing, it's just uplifting. Um, mm -hmm. But so I, I, I look at that, I look at uh, maybe reaching out to Northampton neighbors. I know that they do a web series, like not a web series, uh, like a Zoom meeting. And I could look into when the next one is, if it falls in uh, into there. So maybe, you know, myself or someone else could go to that. Uh, but then I also look at, um, possibly the youth commission could be one that someone could go to. Um, I, I, I really like the inclusion of the youth, the youth commission. And, uh, I, you know, I think it's really important to have kids. Like when I think of barriers to access to service or, or people who, who we should really be promoting to, I think that the next generation of voters of, of policy makers, of influential people are the, the kids. So uh, possibly reaching out to them and seeing if, I, I, Laura, am I correct that Alan Wolf is the liaison for Youth Commission? That's, yeah, that's what I've heard. Okay, so I, I, I'd be willing to reach out to Alan to see if we can find some time in there too. That would be great. That would be awesome. Yeah, it, yeah, this is, this is amazing. And uh, uh, just uh, keeping in mind too, that um, I think you have to be 18 to serve, I think, okay. but you also have to be a resident. So we might just keep that in view as we go Perhaps. out there. 
into the community and and you know those those two criteria are going to be important because I think that's written in the charter um, as pointed out to me by someone in the mayor's office so yeah I mean you know this is this is the youth commission that was one of the commission asking to lower the voting age they may also want to ask the city to allow from starting from 16 to be able to serve in city commission and commission so I, I, yeah, I, I fully agree with good Garrick and, and yeah, it's absolutely right. Excellent. Is there anything else in relation to this that uh, any of the members went? Oh, I, I was just thinking, I think the Truth School also has a youth program. Perfect. We can, we can share information with them too. And they have classes, they have workshops. Yes. So we can also let me. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Reverend McTerry from uh, from James Church, the one that usually does the Martin Luther King. I'm gonna ask him where if there's gonna be the celebration, and if they can make an announcement about the work that we're doing during the or if one of us can make an announcement got to give it like 20 seconds to to give a, an announcement about participate city participation that's what you know reverend king would want people getting involved <laughs> excellent is there anything else in relation to this agenda item excellent i'm gonna stop sharing my screen Let's see. Uh, so Susan is not here. So um, we would, I mean, this is literally sort of reporting back from uh, the event. So she would um, report back from, from, you know, taking a look at a little uh, uh, to data, municipal data related to compensations and demographics. So that's not gonna happen today. Uh, it's 8.39. I think that we have gone through every single agenda item. Is there anything else that any of the members would like to talk? We're in new business right now. Is there anything that um, I have missed, we haven't talked about, or we talked, but you would like to mention? Cynthia. Um, yeah, I just want to confirm, I think, what you said, Javier, because I went through the minutes very quickly, and we did mention uh, last month that we wanted to have Karen Foster come and dissect for us the process that the services committee goes through. So um, just to confirm, you said that that is going to happen, yeah. and it's going to happen at the next meeting. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you. The 24, yes. And that's right. not, not because of me, but because <laughs> Laura <laughs> saved the time to do it. So okay. it's already agreed to she's she's available. So and you know, and, and I was talking with Laura about this. Karen has come to almost every meeting. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Probably, yeah. So uh if there is any, if there is anything, mm -hmm. uh, there is something that we kind of complains about the level of support that we're getting from our city council president and, and city council vice president. So yeah, I'm I'm pretty confident she's gonna be able to be uh, here, and I think um, that that's it's a great idea, and being able to have her talking a little bit about you know the process and what the how the city council is envisioning this and how it's playing out, as we talked in our last meeting, is extremely important. Um, excellent. Any other thing that sh we should touch base? Um, before uh, we, uh, before I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I think we're fine. So a uh, hundred and a hundred and three um, answers to our survey. It's sort of a testament to the work that we're doing. Sorry, a hundred and four. <laughs> I just refer. I just referenced the screen. A uh, hundred and four. <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, yes, I had them for. Um, it's a testament. It's twenty five percent answer of the one hundred percent of the emails that Laura the, of the email that Laura drafted and sent out 
which is beautiful. It's a super good number. Um, I just want to remind you, talk to people that you know, people that have applied, that, that have served, that you know, for them, inviting them to, to participate. Mention that we're getting a huge response, that every single opinion is important, and every single opinion is going to shape our report in, 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 in add value to what we're doing. Uh, and so I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn then. Looking for a second. Second. Excellent. Laura? Javier. Yes. Um, uh, Councillor Perry. Yes. Gwen. Yes. Cynthia. Yes. Jamila. I guess I yes. should use everybody's first name. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Weird in here. Or egalitarian. <laughs> And we adjourn. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, everyone. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone, as well. Oh, New Year. Yes. And yeah. I got a haircut. Take care, guys. Have a good Bye. evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.